Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the guns and non-guns that they have for sale in their upcoming October of 2015 auction. This happens to be one of the non-guns, although it looks an awful lot like kind of a messed up version of an MG-15 German aircraft machine gun. Now the first thing, if you, if you recognize what you're looking at, the first thought is probably that this is some sort of weird water-cooled version of the gun, because the Germans did make a water-cooled infantry adaptation of the MG-15. However, it's not. This is not quite right to be water-cooled, and you, that'll be really clear when you see it up close. So in actuality, this is a mock-up of an MG-15 machine gun that was built as an aerial gunnery training camera. So when you pull the trigger, it doesn't shoot bullets, it actually shoots film. The idea being, you can get guys to train with these, and they'll take whatever they think is the appropriate uh, lead and, and sight positioning and sight picture with a gun, and shoot some film, and then when they come down, or you can do this on the ground as well, you can then take a look at the film and see where they're aiming, and figure out how they need to correct that aim. That's something easy to do on the ground. You can get little prisms so that an instructor can watch your rifle sights, but when you're in an aircraft, or on the ground, but when you're swinging a moving gun at a moving airplane and there's lead involved, there's no easy way for an instructor to see exactly what you're doing, and thus no easy way for them to correct you, short of having a film record of what you were actually shooting at. So originally these guns used a doppel trommel, a double drum magazine for ammunition, uh, carry handle on it, you'd carry a bunch of these in an airplane. However, on this one, the internals of this magazine have been replaced with a couple big spring assemblies to give the motive power to run the camera. This isn't a still camera, this is actually a movie camera in here. So why don't I bring the camera back and let's pull this apart and take a look at the insides of a gunnery camera. So the technical name for this is actually a Lights MGK-1000 camera, which I haven't mentioned, I realize, to this point. Now I'm going to start by pulling off the magazine. This is actually pretty similar to a standard MG-15. We have a safety catch here to hold the mag on. I'm going to flip that to the right, and then I pull it back, and then I can tip the magazine up and out. Now what we see inside here is instead of having, say, a follower and, and some cartridge lips to feed, instead we have this spring. You would wind that up, and that's going to interface with the gun to provide power for it. The front, of course, is a standard doppel trommel magazine. On the back, we have this square bit with an arrow. That's your, uh, your winding peg. You would have a key, which I don't believe is here, and you would you'd wind that up to recharge the drum. All right, now the gun itself. This is our magazine well, and instead of having, well, a bolt, we have this gear that rotates. That actually is what drives the camera up front, and that's, of course, run by the spring in the magazine. Now if we look at the back of the camera drum assembly area, we have a couple of different controls. I believe this one is f-stop, um, not sure what this guy is, uh, manual advance for the film, and then lastly we have this guy, and as I rotate the camera, the, the drive spindle, that moves, that, that tells you what the position of the shutter is. Now we can also look at the business end here. That's the actual lens uh, cover and lens inside, and, and the actual camera mechanism. The camera itself only occupies this front little area. Back here is all a film canister. So to open this up, I'm going to take this little latch, pull it back, and then I can rotate cover, and hey presto, we have a film canister inside. Rotate this handle, and it pulls back this little catch. That allows me to pull this assembly out. We'll take a look at that in a moment. This drive wheel, again, when I rotate the drive spindle, I'm rotating that. That is going to turn the film spools, film spindles, and advance the film. Don't know if we'll be able to see it here, but we'll give it a try. This is where we're actually getting images through onto the film. And as I rotate the spindle, there we go. You can see that's the shutter open. 
takes a picture and we have an arm right here that is going to grab the film and advance it forward. And then it disappears back uh, into its housing. It will then move back up, come up the top, pull another film, another uh, frame down and repeat that process as long as the quote unquote gun is firing. Now, the film canister itself, we have a little felt pad here. This is spring loaded. This is where the film actually comes across and is exposed. And we have a pair of little latches on either side. If I pull those both back, I can pull the lid off of this. And then, now you can see the inside. You would have two spindles. It's an actual movie camera. So you're going to feed from one onto the other. When it's all done, one of these guys is empty. The other one is full of exposed film. You pull this open in a dark room, develop the film, and then you can see where you're actually shooting. If you would have hit that uh, British fighter or not. One last thing to keep in mind here, because this is removable, uh, when you use up the film, all you have to do is open this up and you can drop in, well, take out your existing film, drop in a new one, lock it in place, and pretty easy to continue filming. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I've read about these cameras. I've, I've seen some stuff on some British, similar British gear from World War I, but this was the first chance I've had to actually look at one of these things in person and it's, it's pretty cool. So if you'd like to own it yourself, maybe you're really a photography sort of guy, uh, it is coming up for sale here at James Julia. If you check the link in the description text below, that will take you to the catalog page on it where you can see their pictures and their description and place a bid online or come up here to Maine and participate in the auction live. Thanks for watching.